Hey, Scott from MyGrowthRings.com here, and uh, I'm going to talk about something boring today. That's right, we're going to talk about the drill press. But before we do this, and by the way, I have five tips for you, um, I want to invite you to visit MyGrowthRings.com. Now, you may have actually been there before. Um, it's it's the uh, a blog I've been writing for almost 20 years that was the Mr. Tool Hunter blog, and uh, only recently decided to go ahead and and link to that as MyGrowthRings.com. I don't know why, but anyway, that's that's what I keep plugging. Okay, so here are the here are some tips for using your ShopSmith Mark V as a drill press. Now, one one quick thing I do want to mention, with the exception of the jointer, um, we try to do everything in woodworking with the board laying flat. I su suppose that after they use the jointer on its edge, somebody probably said, let's not do that if we don't have to. And it makes sense to just leave your boards flat on the table. So if we're going to be drilling into the, the face of a board with the board laying flat, that's a drill press operation. If we're going to drill into the edge of the board, that is a process here with the Mark V called horizontal boring, where we're drilling from the edge. So I'm going to show you today in this video a couple tips for using your drill press. Some of the techniques are applicable for other functions as well. All right, drill press tip number one. We want to position our headstock and our carriage where they need to be in drilling. And we might as well go ahead and tilt our table 90 degrees since that's typically where that's going to be. Now you'll get a sense of where to locate these after you've done some drilling. But I go ahead and install my chuck onto the spindle, onto the quill at this point. And that also helps me uh, judge how far away these parts should be. You'll notice that the set screw on the chuck goes onto a flat, a tapered flat on the spindle on the quill. That tapered flat should be in alignment with a set screw that's on this knurled ring. Uh, it's either a set screw or on older machine that set screw has been filled with some putty. Now I'm going to go ahead and tighten that down using the Shopsmith toolbox. You'll notice I also give that a little bit of a wiggle just to make sure that we're on tight. And then we do our five point safety check. So I check my table tilt and lock that. I lock my carriage. I lock the table height. I lock the headstock in place. And I can, if I choose, go ahead and lock the quill. Now we're going to reach over here and we're going to undo the lock that allows us to lift this in the drill press position. And then here is a very important tip. Always grab this tube directly under the headstock and, and grip the tube as you lift. One of these days you're going to accidentally begin to lift or you're going to begin to lift and not realize that you haven't locked the headstock. So this grip will keep that headstock from sliding. In fact, let me demonstrate this. I'm going to loosen the headstock. Okay, so that is loose as can be. Gripping here and beginning to lift. I'm using my left hand on the top of the headstock on the tube. My right hand here. I'm going to begin the lift. Oh, that headstock is loose. So I'm still gripping with my right hand. Notice if I support the weight there, I could move it. I'm going to go ahead and get that sucker tight. If you needed to adjust the height of this table or the height of the headstock, the ideal thing is to lay it back down and adjust it while everything is horizontal. If you needed to, you could move the headstock up. You just want to begin by gripping it there, loosening, and then lift it from the middle of the headstock. You know, the weight is centered right there between the tubes. You can lift it easier there. Same is true of moving the table up and down. If you grip it here at the center of the carriage before you loosen, and then you might have to lift on the table slightly because the weight of the table, grip fence, jigs, fixtures is, is putting this in a little bit of a bind. So I'm supporting it here, mainly to lift the table to get everything to slide. Best yet though, smartest thing, and well, let's just be smart, is to go ahead and lay everything back down horizontal. Tip number three, I can put this quill handle on either side of the headstock. Being right-handed, I usually leave it over here on this side. There's nothing I can't do with it over here, and if I ever need it, I can just loosen the handle, 
and I can move it over to the other side. There are three different dimples here that I can index that handle into and wherever is most convenient for me. I usually try to set my table and my, my headstock up so that when I'm drilling, I don't have to go all the way around and be pushing up at the point where the drilling action is taking place. You may have done this and wondered, why is it doing this? Uh, you can position that handle so that the travel here puts you in a position where now you're pulling downward. You can also accomplish that by setting the depth or the position here properly with uh, the length of drill bit that you're using. Oh my gosh, I did. <laughs> I just uploaded everything to my computer, started editing, only to find out that uh, the last recording did not record. So if there's anything that's inconsistent here, that's why. What, <laughs> what I need to tell you is my last tips. Uh, I don't even know what count we're on, so let's just go from here. Um, here we have the, uh, the feed stop, and uh, we use this for a couple things. We use it as a drill stop. Uh, we use it, we're using the disc sander as a sander stop. So it's not just called a, uh, a drill stop. It's the quill stop, really. And um, one of the ways we can use this, and they can be confusing, you know, a, a lot of drill presses, including the original version of the Shopsmith, the 10 ER, a lot of them have like a threaded rod with a couple little knobs you have to turn, and little jam nuts, and those, those can not work great. Sometimes they can get loose. This one works fantastic. There's, uh, there are three ways that I use this. Um, one of them, you saw me, I, I accidentally did something in a previous video where um, I, I, as I extended the quill and, and meant to lock it in place, um, just out of sheer habit from when I was repairing these machines, uh, if you turn this all the way to the deepest depth, four and a quarter, I think it is, and then lock it, that will keep that quill at that position. Now, it's not locked, it's just held out. And that can be really handy if you're not drilling to a preset depth, maybe you're using a stop collar on a drill bit or something like that. You can have that quill closer and the drill bit closer to your stock and then drill to a stop. That's handy. But the way that this thing is designed to be used, and by the way, this handle could be on either side. I have it here so you can see better. Um, one of the ways I'll use this is if I just know I want that drill bit to go maybe right there to where it doesn't hit the table, okay? At that point, I can set that to zero and lock it in. I don't really care how far this has traveled. All I know is I'm not going to drill through my table. But if I do have to make a crit critical depth, maybe I'm inserting a, a European style hinge or a, a puck light or something like that, um, what I'll do is I will take the, take the drill bit, I can see the dimple I made before, and I'm going to actually press that into the wood. And uh, if it's a brad point drill bit, basically what I want to do is I want to get a measurement not just from the tip of that little spur, but from the actual flat bottom that the drill bit is going to drill. On a Forstner bit, that's this lifting surface right here that looks kind of like a chisel or a, planer, a plane blade. So I want to get that down to where that's touching the wood. You may even have to turn the drill press on, press it in a few millimeters, and then stop. At that point, I set this gauge for how much further do I want that drill bit to go. So if my goal here is for that to drill a quarter inch or three eighths or half or, or whatever, I just dial that number in. So right here, um, you can see that is the one inch mark. Halfway between zero and one would be the half inch mark. Right there's the quarter inch mark. Let's lock that in. And if I go off to the edge here, you can see that would drill a quarter inch in. Keep in mind two important things. If my stock thickness changes, if I bring up a two inch thick piece of stock, it's gonna drill quite a ways down. So um, I, I, I need to reset this for different thicknesses of stock or use a stop collar of some short sort. And the other thing you got to watch out for is the buildup of, of sawdust. So if I'm drilling and drilling and drilling and I lay the next piece on top of some dust, that's going to raise it up and uh, cause it to drill deeper. Okay, I don't know how many that is. Let's, let's say it's five. That's it for today. I hope that's helpful to you and uh, appreciate any comments that you have. 
And uh, let me know where you want us to go from here. All right, make it a great week.